Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Novak. Uh, I was a poet and playwright, but since January of 2022, my main focus and dedication in life has been to be a reader. It's my main hobby. Um, I did a recent reads video in which I was in the middle of this book or actually closer to the beginning of this book. So I don't think I talked about it very much. I had, I had just come off of Untouchable by the same author, which was his first book. And this is his second novel. An amazingly prolific author, I might say. Um, the, uh, the, the novel Untouchable followed a day in the life of a boy who is member of the Untouchable caste in India. And things go from bad to worst, and, and then the, the day ends, and the book ends. This st story or novel was much more ambitious, and I was very curious to see how the author would handle a second novel. I, in some ways, I think a second novel must be more difficult than the first, because uh, the first was so pared down, and this this is at least a hundred pages longer than that was, and it doesn't just take the events of a single day. We follow again a young boy as he goes from employment to employment. He starts out as a hill boy, minding buffalo or cattle. I can't remember which it was now goes on to become a house servant in the city, then goes on to become a factory worker in the city, then a factory worker in the big city. And it finally ends with him in a, a position of having gone back to a house servant position. And I don't want to reveal the plot, but I must say that the book was as engaging as the first book. Um, I talked about it in my previous Recent Reads video. It was not 100% as satisfying. Uh, it felt like the ending was almost a, what is the, 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 the phrase people say, deus ex machina. Events happened and it seemed they happened just so that he could be gotten to that next phase in the story. But it's a common enough occurrence in novels. I mean, I remember in uh, George Eliot's Romola, which I loved, the character would be walking down the street, and it just so happened to be the street where that person that they needed to run into lived. Or, you know, there was a ring with, and, and the ring goes off on somebody else's hand to another city, and then somebody in the other city happens to see the, that ring on the hand in the other city. Novels rely on this kind of stuff so that they don't have to do all kind of needless exposition, just get the people to where they need to be. So I, I forgive the author, uh, his, his um, deus ex machina, um, occurrence, and just allow allowed it. Um, the ending was not entirely satisfactory to my tastes, um, and so I I have yearnings to read a third book to see what he did because, again, he he followed a young character, and I would like to see him do something different. And I know he did because he wrote a lot of novels. I, I have his third novel, which I just obtained. Um, oops, I pulled up the wrong book. No, this is what I'm reading now. Ugh. This is this is his third novel, which just came. Um, I pulled off the barcode and got that little defect there. But given the nature of the cover design, I don't think it's a big problem. But I, this is a case where I bought the book because I saw a cheap edition of it. 
and I have no intention of reading it anytime soon, but I do want to have it handy because I do hope to read more of the author. Um, he's, he's, he's really great. Um, so after that, if you've seen some of my recent videos, I read this. Now, uh, a man that I follow on Facebook was reading it and talking about it, and it sounded very interesting to me. And so I, I did. And it's, it's, it's 15 chapters. In this edition, each chapter is about 11 pages. Um, in its original edition, there were a lot more pages because a, a lot less was printed on a page. And I've got other videos talking about it, and I have extracts in my notebook that uh, of passages that struck me while I read them, but I've decided not to read any more of these. Um, the book was an interesting read. It's not the kind of thing that I am generally inclined to to go for. In fact, the last time I read anything like this was The Subjection of Women by John Stuart Mill, which I read probably 40 years ago. I read other things by Mill as well at that time. Um, he preceded uh, her. This book was, I think, 1898 published, uh, and he, he preceded her perhaps by 30 years. Uh, he he, of course, had Harriet's help, but I, I think his probably was the better book, although this has the advantage of dealing with my country, the United States of America. And for the first 11 chapters, I would say it's, it's a pretty, pretty good book. Um, she's phenomenal at pointing out defects in the, the marital system and the societal system which segregates two individuals so completely in their function and makes one of those individuals so utterly dependent economically upon the other. She enumerates the defects and is really masterful and her prose is sparkling. Then around chapter 12, I think it was, she moves off into more speculation, I guess, or it's, it's actually a utopian vision. She thinks things are changing and becoming better. And indeed, they have changed to, to some degree. It's rare nowadays that you will find a situation where among a couple, one of them is 100% financially dependent upon the other. So things, things have changed, but she expected change to be a lot, uh, a lot more involved, I think, and, and, and more further along than, than what we have gotten to. Um, you know, there are, there are, aspects of her vision which I don't know how to accept. You know, she, 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 she notes that women do a lot of the house cleaning and all of the cooking, all of both actually in her day. And she envisions a society in which all of that work is outsourced, so to speak. Kitchens will be taken out of domiciles, so nobody will have a kitchen. And that will, that will make the cleanliness or the hygiene of the, of the, the, the domicile uh, superior because so much dirt occurs in the process of food prep. Of course, while we still make dirt because of food prep, it's probably nothing like it was in her day. But the idea of a, a society where kitchens do not exist in people's houses is really hard for me to understand. I mean, I understand in a city like Tokyo, where you've got a well-developed food delivery system, you could easily live 
without a kitchen in, in a house. And I, I would imagine a lot of people do, but not in a country like this. And in our country as it stands now, the food that you get out is decidedly inferior to what you can do at home, particularly if you have a little bit of time and you have two people actively engaged in the preparation of that food. So it it left me somewhat disappointed. I I had expected more, but so, so it is. Um, it's not it's not a book that I would recommend. I think, you know, I think um, more recently in our, in, in, well, in my own time, not probably in most of your own times, you've had Esther Villar, uh, I think from Germany or Argentina. I'm not sure. I think both somehow. I think she was a transplant writing in her book, um, The Manipulated Man, how Feminism did not turn out the way women such as this expected. It looked like it was moving along in a certain direction, and then it did not go that way. So that was the last thing that I read and my tepid recommendation of it. And then I guess I let the cat out of the bag by showing you this. This is the book that I am currently into which I have just started, Memoirs of Hadrian by Marguerite Yorsenar. Now, this book is right now the focus of a reading group that is um, being spearheaded by booktuber Anne Novella and booktuber Micah Cummins. They're, um, now I can't remember the, the, the title of it, Classics and Company, I think it is. And they are going to devote six weeks to this book. And it's already underway, so probably a week of that has gone by. There will be a Discord, and I will link their channels uh, to the announcement video or videos, if I can do that, so that if you want to get in on this um, project, this, this reading event, you can do so. I have only started and am really loving what I've read so far. Um, the, the story, uh, let's see, the story portends to be a letter written by the Emperor Hadrian to Marcus Aurelius, who would become his successor. And I am of the age of the Emperor Hadrian as he begins his letter. And I find the, um, the insight so far just into being a man of that age quite remarkable. The author was not yet 50 at the time and had spent a, a decade working on the novel. And when it came out, it was a big hit. Now, I've had this on my shelf for quite a long time. It's one of those books that I saw at the Half Price Books store and picked up just because it looked interesting. And frankly, after having read the Gibbon at this point and being a little bit more adept with my Roman history, I think I'm probably in a good place to read this novel now. If I had done it earlier, there might be more that um, would have perplexed me. Now, the book has illustrations, photographs. Uh, I I don't know how this is. This is this is an old modern library edition. I'm, I I suppose you can do better now. Let's see if what else there is. Yeah. Um, now the uh, the the quality of reproduction here is probably not so good. I was uh, somewhere where I saw a bust of. Hadrian's boyfriend, I believe it was, and he was strikingly beautiful. And I think he might have made mention to him. He said that a young man that used to go with him on hunts had recently died, and I suspect it might be that person. 
I don't know the history all that well, but as I said, I'm just pages into this book. So that is what I've been reading and where I'm at. And I will report back when I have uh, anything more to say. In the meantime, I am very grateful to you for stopping by my channel. Um, and I will see you again soon. Thank you.